So this is the third video here, and what uh, what we're moving on is to the pathing. So now what we need is we want one line per triangle, and uh, as you can see, we have too many lines. So I think this is this has been done in another video. So I'm going to go pretty quick um, because it's the same uh, same thing. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to fuse the network together because all these are uh, separate. Uh, separate lines and so that's to build the fine path through it so what I'm gonna do is uh, on the input I have you know a point coming in and the way I'm doing this right now is I'm gonna say okay uh, look at my fuse network and find me the nearest point on it restore that now I'm gonna go back to my network and I'm going to say, okay, find me the nearest point on this guy. So obviously they all find this one. But we're running through the points. So we're going to say if this point is equal to the found point, the found value that we found here, we're going to set that point group to start. And if not, we're going to set the point group to end. And as you can see here, we have one point in start and 613 points in end. Now, the next thing we do uh, this is just a noise attribute uh, to jitter up the shortest right here. So there's our groups and from any start to each end. And like I said, I'm pretty sure I've done this before. And so I'm kind of repeating myself. So you might want to skip this. I need to uh, tag the start point and have them come through for, a few, uh, um, for future use because what happens in this system is these triangles talk to one primitive and it talks to the last primitive vertex on that primitive. So what that means is your starting triangle doesn't have anybody to talk to and that's not cool. And so we have to tag those uh, points, find out which ones they are and then build a new primitive so that start point has something to talk to. Um, and so the way we build the uh, the building like, or the spreading is through the generation. Basically, uh, what this uh, gives you, uh, shortest path gives you, it generates a primitive from every endpoint to every start point. So as you can see, it's this, uh, you, you get a lot of overlap here. And so what you got to do is you got to carve it down. And this takes the last two vertices and, and it keeps them and it deletes everything else and as you can see if I move that into here you know there's you know it's all been removed and we have a good working uh, or just what we need just we have no redundancies alright so now we scale this down and the reason why, oh, that's another thing. Uh, we want to transfer, transfer um, those start point and cost, those point attributes. And we just do that with the near point lookup. And so we just transfer that onto this network here. Now, with it, that templated, and I visualize this, you can see that I have a point pretty much for every primitive there. So I'm going to promote attributes that I want to keep. Uh, to the primitive, so cost, um, and then that goes down to the point uh, for prim cost, um, which I don't think I, oh, maybe I do keep, do I, oh, yeah, 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 and then the generation um, goes to the uh, maximum, so the reason why it's set to maximum is it because you want the last vertex the biggest generation to go on the primitive. You don't want the uh, shortest one or the average. So now uh, looking at this and that, we can basically just go through every primitive and do a search. And if you find a point, uh, transfer attributes. Or if you don't find a point, delete. And what we get is this. So now we get um, our original communication network matching up with the find shortest path and then we can transfer over those attributes very easily. And so there you go, we're done. We have all the attributes that, are, that have been built up so we can now animate this uh, network, which is 
it's pretty hefty. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed.